Are your bookmarks in Power BI just not behaving the way that you would expect them to? Well, if that's the case, you're in luck because I'm going to be giving you a bit of a masterclass in bookmarks via uh, Power BI, right? This is going to be quite useful if you are using Power BI to create dashboards or reports and you're using bookmarks for all sorts of different reasons. So as I get into it, smash a like button and let's jump right into the desktop and take a look at what's going on here with Power BI. So I've just got a really blank report, we strip out all the data. In fact, there's no data in here. I'm going to show you the bookmarks in their kind of rawest form. Okay, this is going to help you understand what you can do and what you, uh, and really particular reason that something isn't quite behaving the way that you would expect it to. Okay, so I've got two pages. One page here has got a blank uh, table on it. Uh, the second page has a blank pie chart on it. Okay, now what we're going to use bookmarks for the obvious, right? First of all, we want to basically use a bookmark for a couple of different reasons, right? And there's the idea of using it for filters. There's the idea of using it for navigation. And there's other reasons like data manipulation and so forth okay so we're going to start with the basic one of navigation right it's kind of in the name of bookmarks so the first thing we need to do in order to access the bookmarks is head over to the ribbon here go over to the view tab and then over here you have the bookmarks section we can go ahead and give that a click i'm also going to select the selection pane here as well so that we can see a little bit more of what is going on okay we can go back to the home tab and we have our kind of scene kind of set here okay so the next thing we're going to do is we want to basically usually what i should say you usually use Use a bookmark in conjunction with a button of some kind so I'm gonna go ahead and insert and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a shape and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna grab a pill shape uh, button just here we, I prefer to do this on the shapes rather than the actual buttons but you can use the buttons over here as well uh, and of course you can just create a blank button but I prefer to use the shapes because it allows me to create pill shaped buttons like this one here for example and of course you can do lots of different uh, styles to this you can give it shadows and all that kind of stuff it's gonna keep it nice and basic at the minute okay so here we have a little button and what we want to do is we want to navigate to page two. So we're going to go over to page two. We're then going to go over to our bookmark section and we're just going to hit add. OK, when this is going to do, it's going to add a bookmark and it's going to say bookmark number one. And we're going to go ahead and rename it. OK, we're going to name this page two like so okay now inside here you can see if I go into those uh, three dots the ellipses you you can see that there's a lot of different things that have ticks next to them okay so the first one is data then you've got display then you've got current page and then you've got all visuals okay what this means is that if you hover above it in fact it'll even tell you that the data is going to apply all the filters that you have and the drill downs and all the sort states that you have so if you've got loads of filters running on your page when you go ahead and create the bookmark you're basically capturing that page as it is at that point including all your data's uh, drill downs and filters you can untick this by hitting that button and you can see that now it is not ticked the display is also something very similar this basically applies any visual display states that you have going on if you've hidden a few different things such as the pie chart then uh, you know you don't want it to uh, or you don't actually want to hide those things you want them all to be visible when someone hits that bookmark well you go ahead and untick that button as well then of course you've got current page now this one is what we use for navigation essentially because this bookmark was created on page two we want this to be ticked for navigation which means anytime you hit that button whether that's page one page 101 you're going to be, always be able to navigate right the way back to page two Okay, then you've got all visuals, which applies changes to the all the visuals on the page. We'll leave that ticked for now. Okay, so if I go back to page one, where we have our little pill button here, we can go ahead and go over to the format shape and we can go down to action, we'll turn it on, and the action type is going to be a bookmark, and then we're going to give it page two. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to let me click this button and it's going to take me all the way to page two, which is the page where the bookmark was created. If I had created the bookmark, mark on page one well nothing would appear to happen because obviously I'm already on page one okay so that's your first kind of real simple use case of a bookmark right that's not really what a lot of people use them for because you can now of course use navigation menus anyway and so you wouldn't really use it for navigation purposes but it gives you a bit of an idea now the other thing that you can do of course is manipulate the page by having the bookmarks do certain things so for example if I come back to my page two here you can see that we have a pie chart but what if if I wanted a button to flip it from a pie chart to a graph or something else, right? So I'm going to go ahead and 
basically put in here a line graph. Okay, and I'm going to just put it over the top of our pie chart. And now you can see here that we have the line chart and we have the pie chart. And you can see that I can unselect them from the selections area. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is basically hide the pie chart but keep the line chart active. To do that, I'm going to go back to the bookmark section here and I'm going to click add. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename this. We're going to rename it um, line chart. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the line chart and bring back the pie chart. And I'm going to add another bookmark. And this one here is going to be renamed pie chart. Okay, so it's going to be quite simple. It's, again, you can apply this in lots of different ways, um, but for the most part, that's the most simplistic. Right now, if I click these bookmarks, you can see that it changes quite a bit. Okay, so the line chart here, of course, we still have all those same options, whether we want the data to remain the same, whether we want the display statuses to change, which actually we do in this particular case. The current page is also quite important if this bookmark relates to this particular page and all the visuals we want it to relate to. And it's the same for the pie chart. The only ones that we might want to kind of remove here might be the data if we don't want to apply the filters or we want the filters to change on the page. But again, for the most part, we now have two additional bookmarks that are relate to our page. Too. The other thing that we can do here is select all of these uh, and then right click on them and group them together. And this group can be called page two. So we can go ahead and rename this page two as a group. Okay. And inside there, we have the navigation of the page, we have the line chart and the pie chart. Okay. So now if we go back to page one here, we might have a couple of different buttons. We'll go ahead and add a couple more pill buttons in here. Bit strange shape but we'll go ahead and do that um, and this one might be that we want to see the line chart right so i'll come into this pill button right here we'll go over to the actions on the format shape click it on come down to the type put that into a bookmark and the bookmark we can go ahead and turn it into the line chart okay again we can just use Control c and Control v to copy that if we want to come back to our actions on this new button and we'll change it from a line chart to a pie chart that means that we've got basically three buttons here, right? We have the first button, which is just our navigation. This button basically takes us to our page, okay? But it doesn't do anything else. Then of course, we've got the button underneath, which is the button that basically brings us over to the line chart. If I give that a click, you can see that we have the line chart. Come back to page two and give the one at the bottom a click. That's gonna take us to the pie chart. So you can see that even though we're on page one, it's jumping us to the page. In essence, it's a bookmark, right? But it's also changing the appearance of that page depending on what button that we push so we can see a line chart or we could see a uh, pie chart and of course we can change lots of different things here we could have a page set up specifically with all the filters for one particular criteria so it might be that you're looking at a particular department let's say it was the accounting department and you had all your filters that you would need to see in regards, uh, in regards to the accounting department and you can assign that to a bookmark and then have it as a button that you can push on your on your that uh dashboard, right? Uh, likewise, you might have another button that it takes you over to the sales department and shows you all the things that they need to see. This means that you have less pages going on potentially, and you're actually just using filters and manipulating that through bookmarks. And of course, you can combine those bookmarks into groups and make it a little bit easier to manage. But as you can see, Adding a bookmark in Power BI isn't that difficult. And there's lots of different use cases and reasons that you might want to go ahead and do this. So hopefully you have found this brief tutorial on Power BI's bookmarks useful and informative. If you have, hit that like button. I really do appreciate that. Subscribe for more hints and tips. And if you haven't done so already, check out that video right there. It's one you probably don't want to miss.